for tuning in to 88.1 FM if you're in Highland Park in Detroit, 107.3 FM if you are in the Virgin Islands or North Carolina, and TV 33. I am Black Coffee, also Valerie Bonner, 
and we're going to bring it to you black and strong and nostalgic tonight because in the studio I have with me the original two members of the original Funketeers. I have my cousin Michael Kelly and I have Tony Warren. Say hello to everyone. What's going on everybody? Hello everybody. And so this evening we're going to have a little conversation. We're going to go back to 1979. Basically, I know that was my first year of going to Inkster High. Um, and talk about our small town, Inkster, which is primarily a town of approximately 30,000 residents, primarily black. And back during that time, it was a really great town. And not saying that it's not right now, but some things have shifted and changed. So what I want to do is talk about that time, going to school, and how in the world did you guys form the Funketeers? Because all I know, we were in school together, d getting our education, and all of a sudden, this group forms and takes Detroit and Inkster by storm and basically around the state, winning ta talent shows in Flint and other places. I remember the other guys who used to try to break it down. I think they came from Flint or another town. They would try to come in and try to win our talent show not gonna happen so you know let's start out with Mike All right. tell me a little bit about because were you in the formation of the group no when I I moved to Inkster originally in 1975 my our freshman year in high school and coming from Detroit I saw these guys doing these dances that we didn't do in Detroit and one guy in particular uh, out in Inkster by the name of Charlie Hatcher and he, I was reading comic books, and I told him I would trade comic books for dance lessons. And he was in the group Funketeers. And that's what got me going. That, that dance, the way he could move his hips, was just awesome to me. Wow. And, you know, I have forgot about Charlie Hatcher. Being, so who were the original members of the Funketeers? Edward Miller, Charlie Hatcher, Buddy Horn. Those were the three. Wow, mm -hmm. I remember those names now. I didn't think of it at the time. Mm -hmm. So then there came a wave of members g coming out and going in, and that's when Tony kind of joined. So, Tony, when did you join the group? Uh, it was about, uh, what was that, 79, 80? That'd be 80. I came out in 79. Yeah, um, we had got together uh, in uh the basement or really it was like a family room and we were just kicking around we thought we were going to sing or just <laughs> you know we didn't know <laughs> what we were doing but uh it just so happened you know we kept putting these dance moves together and we said it's a talent show friday let's enter the talent show we had one week and we practiced that week and the inks the high talent show yes yeah. okay yes and uh one of our guys uh cricket A.K.A. Demon, <laughs> he was supposed to be the MC or something of the talent show, and it just so turned out that we could slide right into a slot, you know, and get in the talent show, and uh, we ended up winning, you know. So mm -hmm. that was uh, yeah, the rest was history. Wow, I remember the talent show. Yeah, I remember all of that, and um, you started going real big, and you ended up coming to this very place where we are today the new dance show and first it was the scene and then the new dance show and what made this all full circle you got a chance to see mr rj watkins again this evening that yes, was we did. so yes, we did. tell me a little bit about how you ended up coming to this very studio with your group and dancing uh well again getting the group together from that first event from the uh, talent show that night it was a gentleman who approached us who wants to come down to the DAV hall on Jefferson he said I'll pay you guys exactly what you just won which was 250 and it was five of us so we like hey that's five hundred dollars we'll go so we went down there we did the show it was just a it was, it was a immaculate we were like wow look at all these old people but they were they, they were old <laughs> because it was a cabaret and we were 19 and 20 <laughs> but they, they loved us, and we were like, wow. And the guy said, man, I would love to manage you guys. And from there, the scene came, and Henry's Palace, and everything grew from that. Wow. I never knew that. That was really cool. 
I'm so elated to have you guys here and thank everyone for tuning in to 88.1 FM if you're in Highland Park in Detroit, 107.3 FM if you're in the Virgin Islands in Charlotte, and also TV 33 if you're looking at your Roku. We have a clip of the Funketeers from when they were on the scene. <laughs> And we're going to show that clip at this moment, um, a little bit of nostalgia for you. Words are fun, words can put you on the run. Mots pressés, mots sensés, mots qui disent la vérité. Mots maudits, mots mentis, mots qui mordent le fruit d'esprit.
well. It was quite interesting um, to watch that clip for me. <laughs> Let's start with Mike because I heard you over there making sound effects like pow, ah. <laughs> <laughs> So what was that all about? Tell me how you felt watching yourself like 30 plus years later. I felt like I was reliving it. I felt the piles and that those are the sounds we we're making at practice and you get certain moves and you're like, uh, you just, you're just feeling that funk. It's just all in you. It's just something that God put in us. You know, you just gotta, it just can't even explain it. When you're feeling that music so much, it just takes you away and you know you're jamming. Yeah. It's just all in. Wow. Mm. And what about you, Tony? You know, I I, uh, I was just thinking about that was our prime. You know, uh, that was when we were just hitting a peak. Things were good. Uh, we were cohesive. We hung out every day. We mm -hmm. practiced every day. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was a brotherhood, mm -hmm. you know, as it's always been. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we are still tight today because right. those are my brothers. That's right. That's really cool, and that's a perfect segue into where I wanted to go because you guys are still friends today. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're mm -hmm. tight, and I'm sure that doesn't indicate you never had a disagreement, oh, right? Everybody does. Everybody that. does, right. but you you figured out how to overcome them. And in my mind, I was reading some of the comments on live. Jasper Gary is saying, pow, and you know, um, Someone on here was saying that you guys uh, created the Matrix before its time. And, um, you know, I believe that the, the viewers also feel the nostalgia and can appreciate what you guys have done. I know for me to say that I even know you, Amen. you know, still to this day, and that you're doing well, that you made a mark in history. You got a chance to see Mr. Watkins today, man. Nothing else great has to happen for me this week. It's, that's that's <laughs> it for me. You know, to sit in a studio with some young man from Inkster, our hometown that revolutionized dance mm -hmm. at that time. Your popularity didn't go to your heads. I remember being in school with you. You were the same every day. Inkster wouldn't let us. It was all brothers and sisters with the whole community. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Good to hear. Let's start with you, Mike. So, you know, being a close-knit family, family, because I know from back then until now, no one paid attention to the spelling of our names. Yeah, I know, right? They just thought we were cousins because <laughs> you adopted me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in mm -hmm. school by myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't have brothers and sisters in school with me, right. and you were like, you my cousin. Right. No Nobody problem. ever paid attention that I had an extra E <laughs> minus K-E-L-L-E-Y, and yours right. is K-E-L-L-Y. We just had that family bond still right. to this still day. day. Family. Let's go back to what Inkster was like then, because what I want to do is hear from each of you and talk about what that family environment was like for us then. And then we're going to segue into what Inkster is like now. And what do we think happened, and how do we get it back to what it was before? So I'll start with you, Mike, because, see, we all went to different elementary schools, right? And we met up at Failrath. And I know when we got to Felraff, Johnny Clark was the protector from our side of the, the railroad <laughs> tracks. <laughs> like Johnny Clark was going to make sure everybody was good from the Parkwood side, right? But none of that never really had to take place. When we got to Felraff, we all meshed. So talk a little bit about that experience from your perspective, Mike. Moving from Detroit to Inkster, I, I was really mad that first year because I, I wanted to stay in Detroit. I never had heard of Inkster. But I thank God for parents because they brought me out there, and it was a whole new culture. It was, it was family. The whole community felt like everybody knew everybody. And although I wasn't born, didn't grow up in Inkster, I really truly felt that I have. I, I know everybody's like, all of these are my brothers and sisters. That anytime we see each other in the streets or the community, and it's, it felt that way where you can go over to Tony's house and, and his mother would be my mother. He'd come to my house and that's mama, and Tony Lacey's house and that's mama. And, it feed us and cook for us and all the things that parents do, mm -hmm. the, the community. The, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And it was truly, truly that. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And Tony, what about you? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> Inkster was originally, originally named a village. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it showed through in just the way I met my first friend, who is Tony Lacey. He was a taller 
gentleman, in, light skinned guy in, in the uh, cliff there, and uh, he lives across the street. And my mother was very protective. See, I went to private school. I didn't go to the the, the schools in the hood. I mm-hmm. wanted to. I wanted to be part of the hood, <laughs> but mm-hmm. mom wouldn't let me. You know, she was a little protective, but she let me go across the street. <laughs> and uh, me and my man got cool, and we did everything together. I mean, hey, that guy chauffeured me to my uh, 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 my first homecoming. I think, uh, you know, he drove the car and, and sat out in the ride, wore the hat like the chauffeur the whole <laughs> nine yards. Wow. <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yeah, Tony yeah. Lacey. You know, Tony Lacey. That's, that's so you were my, like a brother, like like we say, family. That's my first friend, my big, my that's my brother. You know, we got over 40 years. You know, um, I see on Facebook from time to time people say who have friends that they've had for 25 years or more. Mm. I got, mm. I got four brothers that I've had for 35, 40 <laughs> years of history. Mm-hmm. You know, and we still love each other like brothers. Amen. Wow. You know, and it took a great deal of to accomplish what you guys accomplished. You had to have a great deal of discipline. Mm-hmm. Yes. Consistency and yeah. motivation. So how often did you practice? Wow. How often did we not practice? It was, it was daily. It was daily. And we would practice for hours. We would meet up over Tony Lacey house, and, and that was just the spot. Miss Lacey had that living room that Tony was talking about that uh, we would all practice down. It was perfectly fit for our routine and the five of us. And we would practice so long. I mean, there was nothing else to do. What better than being in the streets, we were actually able to sit down and, and, and mesh and become good citizens, I think, as opposed to letting the street take us out. Mm-hmm. That was the one thing yes. that kept us going. We could just depend on each other, practice for hours. Even after we get through practice, we'd still go hang out together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go play basketball, go to a party or whatever. We would just, these are my true brothers. It's, it's, it'll, it'll always be. Mm-hmm. That relationship is awesome. You know, um, it warms my heart and soul to see you guys still be friends and for us to still be friends. That's right. You know, there was some space and time where we didn't see each other, but Mm -hmm. as soon as I came to Gethsemane and Mm -hmm. saw you, the love was still the same. And I ran into Tony a few Mm -hmm. years back. The love was still the same. Um, We were rooted in morals, values, and integrity at that time. You know, um, we didn't have to demand respect from you guys or any other men because you were raised to respect us and you were raised to look after us and you were raised to treat us like family Mm -hmm. and all of that happened i remember um yaki french came up to me Mm -hmm. and she knew that i was alone by myself and she was like just tell everybody you my cousin Mm -hmm. you won't have no problem that's all it took there (laughs) yeah yeah no doubt about it yeah she said tell everybody you my cousin you won't have no problems. Right. No problem. And I'm like, all right. So then I became an extension of the Davises because Asa <laughs> Davis and George and them mm. lived around the corner mm-hmm. from me. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, I had like this extended family mm. and then the roots live next door to me, mm. Valerie, Debbie, Kenny. Wow. And so we just, this family just started growing okay. and it was a wonderful thing. Let's talk about what happened, though. The trend of dance, the only time I remember, other than a two-step or a slow dance, someone touching my body while dancing was the bump. Now these kids are all over each mm. other. <laughs> it's like a form of pornography. That's look like it. Something like I've never seen. So we've evolved from this community environment um, carrying ourselves with respect, dressing like respectable men and women to saggy pants, mm. um, <laughs> gyrating and doing all of these other things in public, um, birthday parties at strip clubs yeah, now, yeah, and, yeah. you know, all of these other things going on. How do you feel we got there? Let's start with Tony. Tony, how do you feel we got there? What do you think happened? Well, you know, um, the cultures changed, you know. Um, we grew up where there was, uh, I mean, I th- there's always been a, a, a culture a underground, so to speak, of, uh, you know, drug culture and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of our morals and values got lost in, uh, you know, with the music changing, you know, the disrespecting of women, the women allowing men to disrespect them. You know, when the women start accepting this foul language, the men 
did more, mm. you know. And as the men do more, the acceptance becomes more normalized. And mm -hmm. before we know it, we're in this place where the kids are trying to push the bar farther than it was pushed previously. And now we've got to this place where, you know, um, the biggest thing on the internet is, uh, what is that dance they do when they're gyrating? Uh, twerking. 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 Yeah, twerking. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, twerking is an international oh, my thing Lord. now. You know, it's not, it's, it, we thought it was a black thing. You see all, <laughs> but it's like, I'm just saying, it, it's uh, morals of value. My body won't move like that. <laughs> so <laughs> I could do that if I tried. Mike, is there anything you want to add to what Tony said? Because he covered just about everything that I thought. Is there anything else you think contributes to where we are today? You know, I remember when when the dance The Freak was out. I think when The Freak came out, it was a lot of fights happening with that. You look on the dance floor and somebody else freaking on somebody, woman and all that, and there'd be fights and all lot of stuff happened from that. And I, 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 that, that dance was something else, The Freak. It I was, forgot about The Freak. They outlawed it a couple of places. Like, you can't do yeah, a freak in I here because this is too freaky. I, I forgot that. about Man. The Freak. I was oh thinking of like The Bunk. Yeah. Hey. The bump was cool. The bump was cool, but, but you're freaking, right. you all up on that bad boy. Yes, yeah. well, it I was guess something. I forgot about it because I wasn't down with it. So, all right. It was something. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, we're going to prepare for another break. And who remembers Curtis Blow? Oh. These what? are the breaks. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Clap yeah. your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. Cause I'm Curtis Blow and I want you to know that these are the boys. Breaks on a bus, breaks on a car, breaks to make you a superstar. Breaks to win and breaks to lose, but these here breaks rock your shoes and these are the boys. Break it up, break it up, break it up. Another man And she runs off with him to Japan And the IRS says they want to chat And she can't explain why you claimed your cat And my bell sends you a whopping bill With 18 phone calls to Brazil And you borrowed money from the mob And yesterday you lost Job. Well, these are the breaks. Break it up, break it up, break it up. Throw your hands up in the sky and wave around from side to side. And if you deserve a break. Tonight, somebody say, all right, all right. say ho. ho, you don't stop, I keep on, somebody scream, break down, break on the stage. Break it up, break it up, break it down.
just do it, do it, just do it, just do it, I just do it, do it, do it, just do it, just do it, just do it, do it, do it, just do it, just do it, just do it, do it, do it. You say last week you made the perfect guy. He promised you the stars in the sky. He said this Cadillac was gold. He didn't say it was ten years old. And these are the breaks. We were in here doing the snake and everything. I wish y'all could have saw us on the break. We were doing a snake and laughing, laughing, laughing. So I want to give a shout out to some of our inkster peeps. First of all, Kim, Michael's wife. I love you so much, mm. Kim. Thank you for joining in. Hey, I see chocolate on here. Hey, chocolate. Um, Lane Purcell, you lived around the corner from me. Hello, Lane and um, Terry Brinston, up, Terry? Anthony Joyce. Yeah, AJ. What's up, AJ? Um, what's up, AJ? Yeah, I came out with AJ. Yeah, yeah. Anthony Joyce was just cooler than a all fan. Right, AJ, all right. Inktown. So, house. yeah, thank you for all the Inktown people that's on the live and everyone else. I'm not discounting that, but thank you to all everyone that's joining in. Mm -hmm. So, Jasper Gary is on the live and he took us perfectly into this segue because the demise of Inkster came with the downfall of the education system. Yep. I just feel strongly about that the quality of the education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. went down with mm -hmm. the school mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to have a community thrive mm -hmm. and people to move into a community that doesn't even have a school that's system right. that's right yeah absolutely you know so that's very yeah. difficult but let's go back to the days at Inkster High did Mr. Mosley ever chase you Mr. Mosley was just a teacher when I was there, so if he had chased me, we'd have been fighting. <laughs> it, it, when they, we got to be a principal, I'm like, oh, he the principal? Please. Uh, but yeah, he Mr. Didn't. Mosley <laughs> would chase you down the hall. <laughs> if that bell rang and you were still in the hallway, he would chase you. Oh, Lord. He would chase <laughs> you to your hall. You remember... Um, Miss Raglan at Fell Ralph, you don't remember her? I she used go to, to ask Ralph. you if he was on medication. Mm -hmm. She said that now she'll be fired. Oh, right, Lord. Right. You, I didn't you, go to Fell Ralph. You didn't go to Fell Ralph. Get oh, out of line neither, in Miss Raglan neither. class. Neither. And wow. she would point and say, Are you on medication? <laughs> if you don't sit down somewhere, you know, so right now mm. the kids take total control. If I was a teacher right now, first of all, I don't know if I could right, be right, because right. I couldn't imagine a child hawking and spitting in my face or jumping on top of a desk, I'm kicking me or you. assaulting me or whatever. I cannot say. I can tell you a de-escalation procedure that I have written down for my agency and the mm -hmm. work that we do, but in that very moment, right. it takes a whole lot of restraint yes, to let a kid who should be giving you respect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hawk and spit on you. Oh, no, that's something. That's the lowest, lowest, lowest Ooh. of low. I'm sure you've seen some of the videos. I yes. saw a video where a young lady stood on top of the desk and was kicking her foot in the teacher's face. Wow. And I imagine myself kicking that desk out from under her, like just that, kicking that, the desk so I'm she saying. could fall in, or grabbing her leg so mm -hmm. she could fall and hurt herself. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a whole lot of um, restraint, restraint, restraint prayer. and everything else to be a teacher these days. And Chocolate says parenting was lost, kids having kids. Yeah, right I do believe that um, that is true, Chocolate. Mm -hmm. You know, the discipline went away. And I it think did. sometimes we can give our kids too much. The work ethic got lost. Yes. I didn't, yes. we didn't have Roundup. I thought a butter knife was used to clean the grass in between the cracks of the sidewalk <laughs> at my mama house. Mm. Come on. You know, it wasn't no Come Roundup. Mm -mm. You spray some stuff and no. kill the weeds. I mm -mm. was out there in the heat of the day. You was the Roundup. Yes. <laughs> I was the dishwasher. And I teased my mama today, like, why your house messy? Because I moved out, like... I was the maid, right, I was right. the dishwasher, we cut grass, my brother cooked, ironed, yeah. like my, I didn't care about no girl boy chores, everybody's working around mm -hmm. here, we're going to be a cross-functional family. Let me ask you this, did you ever go to the, uh, uh, to the, to the farm and pick 
your own vegetables. Yes. Mm. And then come home and snap the and, and snap shell them on the side of You know we was all at blocks oh, out well, there at blocks. Rose Farm That's out right. there on Middle Belt. That's I right. think a whole generation has missed that experience because mm -hmm. we used to pick fresh vegetables, go home and then prepare them, That's true. and then freeze them for whenever it was we gonna use them. Mm -hmm. You know, it was some it was some some building blocks that have been completely erased. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. I yes, agree. I agree with that. And my cousin Miller Thomas says they were really role models for us and those who love dancing. They were our brothers and our cousins and though and more. So that's from my cousin um, Miller Thomas. All right, so Miller. Miller. He's right. saying that you guys what's were role models to them. They're <laughs> saying, what's up? I know you can hear mm -hmm. them. And I'm just so proud of the things that Miller is doing with music. And he also yes. created a bump for this show. And wow. he's doing some great Very things good, um, with hey, his career. Up, that's awesome. Um, Terry Brinston is saying a great community conversation. Brother, yes. Yeah. And so Simone Reese says they didn't cuss in songs back in the day either. Yeah. They were made for dancing. Mm -hmm. That's true. I saw, I believe that was Jasper who was saying um, that our communities have been poisoned and he doesn't mean with drugs or alcohol, just poisoned intellectually and mentally with the videos. The introduction of cable television did a lot. I agree with that. You know, we didn't hear cursing at all on nope. television when That's we were right. growing up. Now That's they right. say whatever. Oh, and show whatever. And I was listening, listening to my little six-year-old great-nephew watch a show, and it was animated, so I didn't think anything of it. I don't have kids, so I don't I watch cartoons, understand. and they were on there cursing. I'm thinking it's just a cartoon. I had to regulate, like, oh, we can't watch this. You know, That's he's something. six years old. Yeah. yeah. That's something. I remember when my son Travis was, was little, and uh, people used, like you said, babies raising babies, letting kids watch Friday as their babysitter and things like that, watching Debo, trying to be Debo's, like that's not cool. So we didn't allow Travis to watch a lot of these movies when he was growing up. I'm, if he's listening, I know you know this, Travis. <laughs> he, I'm sure he didn't made up for it and watch all Travis of them now. Travis like, don't call me out. I was trying to be cool. People thought I was watching this, and you just calling me I out, sure Dad. I called him out because we wasn't having that. Like, uh-uh, we're not going to let the TV raise you. No, mm -mm. Um, and I don't think that we should. I really don't think that we should. And there's a lot going on. I know for me, I'm doing my part to try to give back, you know, to reach back to the young people or mentor a girl or two or, or three, um, you know, to do what I can. I don't know. We need a whole symposium on the rate, the uh, epidemic in the black community. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? You know, there is no village anymore. I saw someone on the live, I think it was Chocolate, saying, you know, there was a village. When we were in Inkster, yes, it was considered a village at one time, right, right. but we had a village. Yes, we did. That family environment that you talked about, yes, you embracing did. me, just the similarities of our last name brought us together, and mm -hmm. we're still cool to this That's day. Right. Tony saying how he went to Miss Lacey's house mm -hmm. and ate dinner and can stay over there all day. Miss mm -hmm. Kelly's too. That's you right. know, um, <laughs> oh, that's right. I would go houses. to Miss Everett's house. Mm -hmm. You know, Veronica Everett was yeah. my BFF. Yeah. And right. Crystal Dixon and I have been uh -huh. friends yeah. since the kindergarten. Okay. Okay. I could ride my bike from my house over on Wellesley to Crystal's house on Kenwood. No fear, no drama or whatever. But when that streetlight buzzed, I had it time right. You know it. <laughs> that I had to hit Michigan right. Avenue and Middle Belt by a certain time and get that hill. I got that momentum, got that momentum on that hill yes, coming yes. down where the golf course is right now. So I time. can get yep, it on just in time. I didn't even have to paddle the rest of the way like you better that hit they got the you. Yes, yard sir. Come on. Because yeah. she yeah. would beat you down. What yeah. you say? What you say? She would beat you down. Mm. Like, oh, no. When that street light buzz, everybody took off. Everybody. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah everybody when we played did. four square in the street, we didn't stare at the car. If a car was coming, we saw the car approaching. We Come would on. move out move the way. Move out of the way. These kids will stare at you. Like you supposed to be going like inside walking or something. Pumpers. Yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, Truly. Amazing. No home training. <laughs> Yeah. No home training. Mm. So, fellas, as we prepare to close this show out, I just want to say thank you. Thank I want to say thank you for being the gentleman that you are. 
because you can be born with certain genitals and become a boy and become a man but to be a gentleman it requires a That's lot right. Right. you were one then to me and you're still one now to me i love you love so you much when i reached out to you and asked you to come on to the show you didn't even hesitate for a second but before even asking you to come you've been so supportive of right. me and now i'm all tearing up because i'm a cry baby but i love you right back love and you back. thank you for all the support that you've ever given when i've done things at your church mm -hmm. mike you've mm -hmm. been there to be supportive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. No and it. if we never get the village back in the community, mm -hmm. we still have one. We had Anthony Joyce. I see my That's cousin right. Wanda Thomas AJ. on the line. <laughs> you know, Anthony Joyce, Terry Brinston, Lane Purcell, Terry. Chocolate. You know, that's our village. I ran mm. into Chocolate at a banquet. Um, in the spring with Anita Clark. Anita Ooh, Clark invited me to a banquet. Sure, yeah. I hadn't seen chocolate in years, wow. but when I sat at the table next to Lawan Hendricks, Pappy's sister. We call her chocolate because she's so beautiful oh, and chocolate. But when I saw her, she embraced me like we hadn't missed 30 years. Right. We laughed. Right. We talked. That's we that. had a good time. That's that feeling. That era that we came from, mm, mm, mm. I will always embrace it from this day forward and know that whenever I transition from this earth, Amen. that I loved you, brothers. Right back. Right and back. that I just tried to make a difference. Right back, sister. Yeah. Right just back. tried to make a difference. Live well, sister. Can we shout out to the Inkster High Reunion? You can shout out. Yes. Go ahead. To we all get ready the Inkster, to close. Uh, the Funketeers will be uh, being presented with some sort of award this Saturday. We would love to see everyone out there. Yeah. Just come see the fellas. We would yeah. love to talk with I you and holler at you. All school reunion. Yeah, so all the Inkster Insta High All School Reunion. I'll give a shout out because I know Trina um, mm -hmm. has yeah. been doing a lot of yeah. work pushing that on she Facebook. Has. It will be at Inkster Park. Is mm -hmm. that That's correct? Right. Yes. And what time? It's, it, say it begins at noon to 6, the program. They say Funketeers going to be recognized around 1.30. Okay, so the Funketeers will be recognized at the Inkster High School. All class reunion will be at Inkster Park. And the Funketeers will get an award that will happen around 1. I believe Trina is performing. Everybody mm -hmm. knew that she mm -hmm. sang. Uh, that was our song, Bird. Mm -hmm. And sing then like I bird. believe they're going to be honoring Patricia Williams of the Stardust yep. and Marvelous. other live entertainers. I believe Big Ivan um, used to yeah, play, play bass with um, my cousin Gino's group, mm -hmm. I believe. And so yep. I think he's yep. going to be there also. So, you know, um, you guys come on out on Saturday. You have been listening to Black Coffee, No Sugar, No Cream. In the Highland Park and Detroit area, you're on 88.1. If you're in the Virgin Islands or North Carolina, 107.3. And, of course, we're on TV 33 on your Roku. Black Coffee is not about spilling the tea or making you feel like you had a shot of cheap liquor. It's just to make you see things from a different perspective, minds. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Everybody was cool.